At number 10 is Cardiac. Cardiac is a superhero who's kind of like the Punisher, but instead of taking down the Mafia, he's tackling the messed up healthcare system. He's got a cool costume, cool gadgets, and a heart replaced by a fancy device called the Beta Particle Reactor. This thing gives him powers like no regular human could have. He's got this vibranium mesh all over him, making him super stealthy, as for as bulky as his suit is, it doesn't make a sound when he moves. And also, He's crazy strong, like 15 tons strong. Plus, he's faster than any Olympic sprinter, and he can keep going without getting tired. But his origin story is what hits really hard. Elias Wortham, Cardiac's alter ego, lost his brother to an incurable disease. Motivated by this tragedy, he studied medicine and ended up in a pharmaceutical company's board. But here's the kicker. While working there, Elias discovered that they hid a cure that could have saved his brother. Why? Well, because it wouldn't have made nearly as much money. That's the harsh reality Cardiac reflects, a system valuing profit over people's well-being. He's not just a typical hero, he fights with a sense of justice and moral obligation, making him a standout character deserving more recognition. A miniseries dedicated to him could shed the light on real-world issues within the healthcare industry. He's not just muscles and gadgets, though. He's super smart, like a genius, and a skilled surgeon. But here's the catch. His heart needs recharging, and if it fails, he's in for trouble. He's got all kinds of high-tech stuff like shooting energy blasts and a hang glider for quick flights even. All in all, Cardiac is a hero taking on big problems with a big heart, or rather a big particle reactor. At number 9 is the God Squad. The God Squad in Marvel Comics might not ring a bell for many, but they are a powerhouse of a crew you just cannot overlook. I mean, seriously, it's crazy that nobody knows about this divine team up. Picture this, at one point or another, the squad had the likes of Thor, Venus, Cersei, the Silver Surfer, Snowboard, Makabashi, Ajax, Amadeus Cho, Adam, and freaking Galactus teaming up to tackle massive threats. God Squad was assembled at the behest of Athena in order to fight against the Skrull Pantheon. Now what's unique about the God Squad is that they're a mix of deities that come from a, a vast variety of different cultures teaming up against mega threats. Think of it kind of like Marvel's A-team of gods facing up against the baddest of bad guys. It's like a crash course in mythology but Marvel style. Imagine if Marvel decided to give these guys heroes more comic time or better yet, give them a chance on the big screen. A spin-off from Thor or Eternals could open a whole new world of epic battles and ancient stories. Who knows, maybe in the next big Marvel movie we'll get to see the God Squad take on some universe-threatening villains. If you're enjoying this video so far, please support the channel by pressing like, subscribing to Most Amazing, and ringing that notification bell. At number 8 is Rage. Rage is a Marvel superhero who's kinda got Luke's Cage powers and personality, but sadly doesn't get nearly as much attention as Luke Cage does. He joined the Avengers way before Cage did but got less spotlight after quitting. He told them that real heroes do more than just fight bad guys. In the comics, Rage's story is pretty twisty. He's been in the Avengers, the Initiative, and the New Warriors, sometimes seen as a villain and a hero. He started heroing super young by lying to fit in with the top heroes. But here's the thing, Rage isn't always liked by other heroes. He's made mistakes because of his anger issues and faced rejection. He struggles with big stuff like race, age, and what being a hero really means. And that's why he's super underrated in the Marvel world. At number 7 is Sentry. So here's the lowdown on Sentry. His alter ego is Bob Reynolds, a regular dude who gets injected with this crazy experimental serum that turns him into the Sentry. And his powers are out of this world. He's got strength matching the Hulk, he can fly faster than Superman, and he packs enough energy to make the sun jealous. But here's where it gets really interesting. This dude's got some serious mental baggage. He's got this whole Jekyll and Hyde thing going on because on one side he's the Sentry, all about saving the day, being a hero, and stopping bad guys. Then there's the flip side, the void, where things get really dark. Part of him that can basically tear entire galaxies apart, making Hulk look like a kitten in comparison. See, the deal is, Sentry's struggle with his dual personality makes for some seriously intense stories. Like, come on, a schizophrenic superhero with the power of a million exploding suns who can either save galaxies or destroy them? That's freaking awesome! But here's the kicker, Marvel hasn't given this guy as much spotlight as he deserves. Seriously, he's got potential for some mind-blowing tales, but they've just been keeping him in the shadows. With powers like his, you would expect him leading the Avengers or headlining big events, but no, he's just been kept in the background. It's like having a Ferrari and just using 
using it for grocery shopping. It just doesn't add up. Marvel needs to rev up Sentry's storyline because he's a character with the potential to blow minds. Number six, Lucius Fox. There are a few people that, without which, Bruce Wayne would not be where he is or be able to do the things that he does. Among this very select group would be Lucius Fox. First appearing in 1979, Lucius was the second in command at Wayne Enterprises. He is an incredibly adept businessman known throughout the world, but he is also, privately, Bruce Wayne's business manager, financial executive, and not to mention, Armorer. And if that weren't enough, when Bruce Wayne decided to resign, Lucius was promoted to CEO of Wayne Enterprises and the Wayne Foundation. His power definitely comes from the power of the company, his connection to Bruce, his sons, Luke and Jace, who is not a member of the Bat Family, surprisingly, and he also does have a military background, so there is that if he's ever in like a little scuffle. It turns out that in DC, power isn't only about how big your muscles are. Number five, Batwing. Luke Fox is not the first Batwing, but for a lot of of us, he is definitely the coolest one. Being the son of Lucius Fox, Luke is a tech genius, graduating a year early with two degrees from MIT. His tech prowess really aids him as he has an incredibly advanced suit of armor that does a lot. For example, the suit has a full faceplate, retractable cape, and an interior skin that monitors vital signs and enacts first aid, like hardening around broken bones to hold the bone in place and administering painkillers. It gives Luke a form of invisibility, detective vision, holograms, it can access the GCPD computers, features gyroscopic assist, a terrain map, shock charges, a kinetic patch, anti-personnel plates, and just so much more. This is on top of Luke's training as an MMA fighter before his Batman training. Unfortunately, he just hasn't received a chance to shine in the spotlight yet and primarily works as a supporting character in most Bat family storylines. Number four, Stephanie Brown. I feel like there are a lot of mixed feelings on Stephanie Brown out there. She has had an interesting history as a member of the Bat family. Originally, Stephanie fought against her father, the villain Clue Master, under the vigilante name Spoiler. She would usually fight alongside Tim Drake Robin, and they had a bit of a relationship going on on the side. Now, Batman eventually trained her up some, and when Tim was forced to step down, thanks to his own father, Stephanie even took up the title of Robin. But this was pretty short-lived, as she actually did not make a very good Robin, constantly disobeying orders and pursuing criminals on her own, which eventually led to her downfall. She ended up in the hospital, and it was really questionable if she would even pull through. Luckily, though, she did survive, and even went on to succeed Cassandra Kane becoming the third Batgirl. Now, the two of them, Cassandra and Stephanie, are the duo known as the Batgirls. Number three, Huntress. Like a lot of the Bat Family superheroes that we have already talked about, there have been a few versions of Huntress. The original was Helena Wayne, the daughter of both Bruce Wayne and Selina Kyle, and that character was loved. Unfortunately though, that character belongs to what is known as Earth 2, which is essentially the world of the original DC heroes. But she has not remained the prime Earth's Huntress. Instead, we now have Helena Bartonelli. Well, sort of. We also have a Helena Wayne, but she's from an alternate future of Prime Earth. Are you confused? Because so am I. Let's just talk about Bartonelli. The only surviving member of the Bartonelli crime family, Helena has dedicated her life to a vendetta on crime after her family was wiped out by being a part of said crime. She was actually incredibly ruthless, very much willing to take the lives of criminals, which brought her and Batman to odds on a few occasions. But with that famous determination, Batman was eventually able to sway her way of thinking just a tiny bit. She was also done really well in the Birds of Prey movie, so definitely check that out if you haven't already. Number two, Azrael. Another hero title with multiple bearers. This time though, it's a little different. The title of Azrael belongs to the chosen warrior of the Sacred Order of Saint Dumas, cloned and enhanced, subconsciously trained and conditioned, and raised to be a perfect soldier. The most famous, and the one I'm going to talk about today, is John Paul Valley. Once he became Azrael, Valley had encountered both Bruce and Alfred in Switzerland, saving them and actually abandoning his own order for Bruce Wayne's moral values, and he went back to Gotham with both of them. He impressed he impressed Bruce Wayne so much within his time that when Bruce eventually had his back broken by Bane, it was Valley who Bruce chose to continue the Batman name. Fortunately, this didn't go too well, as he lost his grip on reality and fell from grace. But he is an incredibly cool and capable character who has arguably gotten much better on the more recent Prime Earth. Number 1. Ghostmaker Minkoa Khan, Ghostmaker, is essentially Bruce Wayne's rival from his formative years 
into becoming Batman. Kind of like how in Pokemon games you always have a rival who you hate but kind of respect because they always challenge you and help you improve. Ghostmaker trained with a large number of the same mentors that taught Bruce Wayne and it's arguable that Ghostmaker is actually equal to Batman. The difference between the two is mainly in ideologies. For starters, Ghostmaker is kind of a psychopath. Bruce Wayne is not exactly psychologically sound but he has a strong moral code whereas Ghostmaker fights crime as if it's a kind of sport and he has absolutely absolutely zero qualms with taking someone permanently out of the picture. Operating mostly in Southeast Asia, he constantly tried to get Bruce to see things from his point of view, which eventually led the two to agree to just stay out of each other's way. This guy is very much rated, but for most fans of Batman, learning about Ghostmaker will come as a surprise. Number 10, Dupe. Dupe is one of the X-Men who is known for being pretty ridiculous, and as such, a lot of people do not take Dupe seriously at all, which also extends to Dupe's power levels. However, I would argue that Dupe is actually one of the most powerful X-Men ever, who is simply grossly underrated due to his nonsensical appearance and depiction. Dupe has powers that allow him to influence the emotions of others, perform magic, resurrect, travel in the liminal space between comic book panels, shatter the fourth wall as he pleases, and honestly, so much more. I think perhaps this is the reason, in fact, that he doesn't appear as often in the comics, and therefore isn't is appreciated for his powers by fans. He's just too crazy. He's just too powerful. And friends, before I move on to our next spot on this list, if you love what we do here at Top 10 Nerd and you love it when we talk about X-Men, I know I love it, be sure that you click that subscribe button, ring that bell so you do not miss out whenever we are talking about all the X-Men goodness. Number nine, Tempest. Tempest could literally undo anyone in the blink of an eye, like she did with Matthew Malloy, who was set up to be pretty much the most powerful mutant in almost all of existence, I would say. His reality bending was honestly off the charts, and yet Tempest was able to defeat him by traveling back in time to make sure his parents never met. Ho -ho. Her ability allows her to create time bubbles in which she can control the flow of time. Her powers earned her a place on Krakoa's Five, a team created for the purpose of handling all mutant resurrections. She can slow or speed up time as much as she wants within the bubbles, and can also use her chronokinesis powers to time travel. Number eight, Juggernaut. Juggernaut, a well-known X-Men antagonist, is widely regarded as one of the most powerful characters in the comics. Even though he is not a mutant, he became a member of the X-Men team after losing most of his abilities due to a dispute with Sidorak and seeking reconciliation with his stepbrother, Charles Xavier. Interestingly, Juggernaut managed to form many friendships during his time with the X-Men. When I say that Juggy is underrated, I don't necessarily mean as a powerful character. I think we all know how powerful and dangerous Juggernaut can be. I personally would not want to face him, that is for sure. But when it comes to him as a member of the X-Men, I feel like this is often overlooked and that overall he's a somewhat underrated member of the team in terms of what he brings to it. And I don't just mean in terms of his powers. Number seven, Beast. Beast is underrated on, honestly, a lot of levels. Whether we're talking about classic Beast or current Beast, but especially I feel with the current Beast that we have, that guy is downright deadly. Not only was he unable to be reined in by Wolverine, who ultimately ended up killing Beast after Beast had him become his lapdog to be sent out on some of the darkest missions of X-Force, reducing Wolverine to a mere tool used for wiping out perceived threats to Krakoa, but he also perhaps has become even more dangerous after being resurrected. Now we have multiple Beast clones who themselves are working on their own small army of Wolverine clones with the project known as Weapons of X. At number six is Detective Chimp. Detective Chimp, a seemingly unconventional member of the Justice League Dark, often flies under the radar. Nestled within DC's magical realm, Detective Chimp's inclusion might appear puzzling at first glance, yet he's a strategic asset with a rich history. Having intertwined with the Shadow Pact, he actively combated the Spectre and assumed leadership. His saga continued as he merged into the JLD, significantly contributing to toppling the enigmatic Upside Down Man. Engagements against mystical adversaries like Merlin and Xanadoth further underscore his prowess. What's remarkable is that Detective Chimp lacks innate magic. His power lies in his encyclopedic insights and deductive prowess. A nonchalant chimp on a couch with a beer might not scream hero, but this tale resonates with the essence of heroism, leveraging what you possess in unexpected ways. At number five is Black Canary. DC's trove of superhero houses some major players, yet few shine as brilliantly as Black Canary. Striding confidently in her signature leather jacket and fishnets, she exudes a unique aura. A formidable Justice League member, she's no stranger to clashing with villains like 
the Royal Flush Gang and Xanadoff. Do any of you nerds remember the Pyrrha incident? Well, it didn't end well, and thanks to Barry Allen, she returned to the fray. At number four is Zatanna. DC Comics is a realm brimming with cape crusaders and super-powered saviors, and harbors an array of mystical manipulators, none more captivatingly enigmatic than Zatanna. When the formidable Wonder Woman found herself momentarily absent, it was Zatanna who gracefully shouldered the mantle of command, guiding the Justice League Dark. Her pivotal role in orchestrating the League's standoff against the sinister Merlin can't be understated. Amidst all this arcane chaos, she deliberately relinquished control, a calculated gambit that culminated in Merlin's undoing. But this was merely the tip of her metaphysical iceberg. See, Zatanna emerged as a linchpin in the League's conquest against the formidable Xanadoth, locking horns with Pyrrha and his nefarious Dark Army. With unwavering metal, she showcased why she deserved the crown of the League's unsung champion. Throughout all of last year, Zatanna became omnipresent, an indomitable force safeguarding the multiverse, and an unsung sentinel shaping destinies with every uttered incantation. At number three is Hippolyta. Hippolyta is a formidable Amazonian warrior, proud and strong. Her introduction into the Justice League as a beacon of hope and might was anticipated by many. But alas, the anticipation doesn't always translate into reality. You see, Hippolyta's presence within the League remained akin to a whisper in the Tempest, overshadowed by the cosmic machinations of Perpetua and the enigmatic Batman who laughs. But fear not, for every star has its moment to gleam. Enter Wonder Woman Historia, a tapestry woven in the loom of imagination. Within its pages, the Hippolyta emerges not as a mere figure in the background, but as a central force. We traverse her ancient battles, her defiance against mighty Zeus, and her valiant struggle to, em to emancipate women from their tormentors. In this alternate avenue, Hippolyta illuminates the narrative with deserved radiance, proving that even obscured stars can blaze anew. At number two is Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman, a symbol of strength and justice who has been a cornerstone of the Justice League, yet her pivotal role often goes unnoticed. In 2022, her journey across the multiverse and involvement in the trial of the Amazons showcased her resilience. Stepping back from leading the Justice League Dark, she aided both the leagues against the formidable Xanadoth, and notably, her contribution in the showdown against Pyrrha and the Dark Army stuck out. Rescued by Barry Allen, she emerged in the final battle, emphasizing her unwavering commitment. Although in this series her time in the League was limited, the quality of her actions spoke volumes. Wonder Woman's return marked a turning point spotlighting her often underrated significance in safeguarding the League and the broader universe. And at number one is Green Arrow. Green Arrow often finds himself lurking in the shadows of the limelight, but let's not underestimate the gravity of his contributions. So you see, 2022 was a really good year for Green Arrow. Not content with mere archery prowess, he silently bankrolled the League's operations, an unsung hero in the financial realm. When the Royal Flush King and Xanadoth posed threats, there he stood bow drawn, ready for action. His devotion went beyond the battlefield. When Black Canary was summoned to the Hall of Heroes, uninvited was he, yet a, yet a resolute in companionship. Hero's ominous dark army meets its match, and eventually Pyrrha's ominous dark army met its match as the battle ensued. Yet it was Green Arrow's sacrifice that tipped the scales, obliterating Pyrrha's machinery and securing triumph. It just goes to show that superhuman strength isn't always about flashy costumes and booming catchphrases. So, so the next time you find yourself pondering the capabilities of these unsung heroes, let's, so the next time you find yourself pondering the capabilities of these unsung heroes, let's remember that Let's remember that sometimes it's the quieter, less celebrated members who possess astonishing abilities beyond what meets the eye. And as we continue to unravel the mysteries of the superhero world, let's always keep that sense of wonder alive because you never know what incredible feats might be lurking just around the corner, ready to amaze us. Number 10 is Adam Smasher. No, I'm not talking about Adam Smasher from cyberpunk lore. I'm talking about the lesser known Atom Smasher, as in the atomic particle smasher, AKA Robert Julian Rothstein, who was a big deal in the DC world, literally, not figuratively. Picture this, he's a hero who could grow super big, towering over trees, and packing a punch that could knock anybody out. Now despite his mega size and power, he didn't get the spotlight he deserved in many big storylines. But there was one storyline where he did in fact prove himself. Adam Smasher did something huge literally and figuratively this time, by kicking a tyrant out of power in Kondok. Leading a team of rebel do-gooders, he flexed his muscles, showing bravery, and, and fought for what he thought was right. His powers on display paid a big role in taking down the bad guys, and his actions reshaped the DC Universe by returning control to the people of Kondok. Adam Smasher may not have been in the headlines all the time, but when he stepped up, he changed the game for the better. At number 9 is Saturn Girl. 
Saturn Girl is a seriously underrated superhero in the DC Universe. She's all about telepathy, a superpower that lets her read minds and communicate without even speaking. But despite her awesome abilities, she's often overlooked, just like the rest of her crew, the Legion of Superheroes. The team doesn't always get the credit it deserves, always living in the shadow of bigger superhero groups like the Justice League or Justice Society of America. But here's the kicker, Saturn Girl once saved the entire timeline. Yeah, you heard that right, a girl who just communicates with her thoughts saved the multiverse. She used her mind mojo to gather every Legion member across different universes to take down the big bad guy, the Time Trapper. Without her, who knows what kind of chaos would have happened? Saturn Girl might not be as famous as Superman or Wonder Woman, but her brain power packs a serious punch when it's used correctly. She's a legend in her own right, even if not everybody knows about it. If you're enjoying this video so far, please support Top 10 Nerd by pressing like, subscribing to the channel, and ringing that notification bell. It helps the video get pushed out to more people, and I would really appreciate it, so do that. Thank you very much. Moving on to number 8, we have Mr. Terrific. Michael Holt, also known as Mr. Terrific, doesn't just juggle lasers like they're nothing. I mean, this guy's got brains and brawn. He's all about saving the day and helping people out, but he doesn't get the credit he deserves. This dude's a top-notch genius and can do some seriously amazing things with his smarts. I'm talking about being the big shot in the Justice Society of America and being labeled as the smartest member ever. Mr. Terrific isn't just book smart though, he's a wizard with tech too. He pulled off some mind-blowing stuff against Brother Eye and saved Selina Kyle's life by putting her heart right where it belonged. Bottom line, Mr. Terrific doesn't always get the spotlight often, but when he does, it's because he's using that epic brain of his to pull off some seriously epic moves. At number 7, The Question. Question is an often overlooked figure, especially the version portrayed by Renée Matoya. Renée, a skilled detective, swaps the comfort of accolades for the shadows of vigilantism, seeking to create genuine change. Despite her remarkable career, the question remains in obscurity, deprived of the rightful recognition she deserves. Not all strength comes from overt displays of power, as we've just seen. Renée embodies the strength through resilience. After grappling with the toll of her superhero life on her mental well-being, she'd stepped away from the role. But when duty called, she did not hesitate to don the question's identity once more. Her willingness to confront personal struggles and yet rise to the challenge when needed showcases a different kind of fortitude. Her story emphasizes that strength isn't just about physical prowess. It's about determination to confront the inner battles and still step up to protect others when the call comes. Number six, Sync. Sync is only now starting to be fully appreciated by fans around the world, all thanks to his reappearance in the Krakoa era. Sync was one of the people prioritized for resurrection as he was needed to go on a mission into the vault where the children of the vault had retreated. Considering them and their evolution a threat, the Quiet Council put together a small away team to investigate what was happening inside the vault, sending them out to basically infiltrate it. This is just what Sink, Darwin, and Laura Kinney, then known as Wolverine, currently known as Talon in the comics, were tasked to do. It's here that we got to bask in Sink's rainbow colors, saw the relationship develop between Everett himself and Laura, and where we learned that it might be possible for Sync to even sync with others who are not mutants. We'd also learn in the X-Men series that Sync had evolved to a point that he could remain synced with his fellow mutants even when outside of their range, making Sync possibly one of the most powerful mutants to just have ever existed. Number five, Banshee. Banshee, simply put, isn't a hero we focused on here on Top 10 Nerd. I can't remember the last time I featured him on a list, and yet he kicks butt consistently in the comics. Banshee's mutant powers turn him into a siren, which oddly enough is the name for his daughter, who shares his abilities, the name that she took up for herself as an active mutant hero. Banshee can use his powers to attack his opponents, fly, see in the dark with sonar abilities, influence and persuade his opponents, and even create shields all with the use of his amazing voice. Basically, he's like a smaller scale Black Bolt, which means that while Black Bolt, the Inhuman King, gets a ton of love in the comics and outside, other Sonic-based heroes like Banshee's Sean Cassidy tend to fall by the wayside sadly. Number four, Chimera. Chimera is the daughter of Storm and likely Black Panther, who hails from the alternate reality 13729. Chimera seems to have inherited the powers of her mother, but also shares a connection to the Earth, which allows her to draw on and harness its energy. She is also a skilled tracker and can communicate telepathically with animals. I'd also assume, as she's the daughter of Storm and of T'Challa, that she is a skilled combatant as well, as while Storm is more well known for her goddess status and weather manipulation powers, she's also an extremely extremely skilled
world fighter as well, and her dad would obviously be a given inspiration for her as a fighter. Black Panther is well known for his fighting prowess. Chimera may have hailed from Earth 13729, where she was a member of the X-Men, but after being displaced to Earth 616, the main comic book continuity, she also became a member of the X-Men there as well. Number 3. Angel slash Archangel Warren Worthington III is not usually folks' first pick for mutants who are their favorite among those who have belonged to the X-Men team, but it is important, I think, to acknowledge Warren's history with the mutants and consider the fact that he is a legacy member of the X-Men. Warren joined up with the very first roster of the X-Men team to have ever existed, being one of the first members to be brought together by Charles Xavier. Sure, he might have hollow bones, and his powers may mostly involve just flight, but when it comes to flying, Warren has proven in the past that he is one of the best, and in his Archangel form, he is even more powerful. He is also one of the most useful mutants outside of his power set, being an extremely accomplished businessman who tends to be one of the most charismatic members of the X-Men, who since his early days has been popular with the public, helping the team's image. Number 2. Polaris Polaris is a character who I feel like often gets overshadowed by her dad, Magneto. And yet she too is just as much, or nearly as much I'd say, of a powerhouse as he is. Polaris has had somewhat of a rough go in recent years, especially when it comes to confronting her past and moving forward towards her future. I would love to see more moments like when she joined the X-Men, where she gets her moment in the spotlight. It's well deserved and Lorna Dane deserves to not have her character sabotaged at every single turn, like has happened to her in in some of her past. She's underrated on multiple levels, both as a hero and as a character with some real depth to her. I think it would be really amazing to see her team up with her now considered adoptive sister and brother as well to fight against injustice in the world. I love all the healing we've been doing with this whole family lately and it would be so cool to continue along that path and see where else it could take us, especially if we bring the family together as a unit. I've seen it happen a little bit in the comics, but I'd love to see more of it. Number one, Kid Omega. Poor Kid Omega's trope initially with his appearance in the Krakoan era, X-Men comics, involved him constantly being taken out as in permanently defeated. But don't let that fool you. Quentin Quire is still a psionic badass who deserves your respect. He is considered to be one of a limited few mutants who belong to the Omega level class, meaning that he has unlimited potential in terms of what he can accomplish. And while being super powerful psionically, he's also super brilliant as well and can actually think faster and at a higher capacity than even other extremely powerful and skilled Omega level telepaths. Quentin joined up with Logan's X-Men and has has been shown to be a potential future Phoenix in Wolverine and the X-Men issue number 42. At number 10 is Tigra, a superhero who's basically a giant talking cat. I mean, tiger. I mean, personally, I'm a dog person, so it's easy to see why Tigra would be so underestimated. After all, she's hardly the most well-known feline superhero out there. Nevertheless, she's got all the cool feline powers, razor sharp claws, agility like you wouldn't believe, and a tail that's more than just for show all pretty generic, but there's one moment in the comics that truly made her stand out. See, Tigra once took down a Skrull who had all the powers of the Fantastic Four combined. Yeah, we're talking about a Skrull with stretchy abilities, fire powers, rock hard strength, and invisibility. Like, forget the Fantastic Four, this dude was fantastic on his ones. And Tigra, she outsmarted and outpaced this super Skrull in a face-off. Even when the Skrull had a speed boost from the Human Torch's fire, Tigra showed that she's the real speed demon here. Now, even though Tigra doesn't always hog the spotlight, like some of the other big names in the Marvel Universe, she's still an Avenger, so while Tigra might not be on everyone's superhero lunchbox, she's definitely got the skills and the guts to hang out with Earth's mightiest heroes. At number 9 is Sunspot. Roberto da Costa, aka Sunspot, isn't your typical superhero. Not only does he have the whole rich guy thing going for him, but his powers are seriously cool too. He's basically a human solar panel, able to absorb energy and turn it into super strength. Now, the moment when he faced off against the Red Hulk was legendary. I mean, going toe to toe with a Hulk takes some serious guts. Sunspot's determination and his solar powered might were on full display here. He launched a punch so strong, it actually drew blood from the Red Hulk. That's like leaving a dent in a brick wall by punching it. It's basically unheard of. Now, what makes him even cooler is the dude typically holds back from unleashing his full fury. In fact, he barely ever needs to throw punches at all. Sunspot usually relies on his charisma and brains instead of flaunting his powers. But when he does decide to unleash that solar strength, watch out, because there's a lot more to him than just his hefty bank account. 
If you're enjoying this video so far, please support the channel by pressing like, subscribing to Top 10 Nerd, and ringing that notification bell. At number eight is Reptil. Reptil is a hero with some seriously cool but kind of underrated powers, transforming into dinosaurs. Like you're in a fight and bam, you can morph into a T-Rex or a Raptor. And that's pretty much Reptil's shtick and it's super awesome. But what's even cooler is that it's gonna take a lot more than a flimsy extinction rock from space to take this dude down. Like you thought meteors were scary? Try surviving a nuclear blast. Yeah, you heard that right. Apparently, that's where Reptile really shines. In Avengers Arena number 18, this guy survives a direct nuclear explosion. He walks out of it without a scratch, no radiation poisoning, nada. It's not something that just any superhero can boast about. Like, even big shots like Namor were impressed. But handling those dino forms is also quite tricky business. He risks losing control every time he switches into a dinosaur, which adds a hefty dose of risk to his superhero game. So while Reptile might not be headlining Marvel movies or comics, surviving a nuclear blast speaks volumes about his toughness. I mean, turning into dinos might not be as flashy as shooting lasers, let's say, but hey, he's got a serious resilience. Definitely a hero worth giving some more credit to. At number seven is Speedball. You know, Speedball might not be the first hero that comes to mind when you think of Marvel track stars, but this guy has an incredible story worth talking about. See, back in the day, he was part of the New Warriors, a team that wasn't exactly grabbing the headlines like the Avengers of the X-Men. In fact, his team ended up becoming a bit satirical with its final incarnation taking the form of a superheroed reality show, which doesn't quite sound so serious. But here's the thing, leading up to Marvel's Civil War, things got super serious for Speedball. His team faced off against this bad guy named Nitro, and let's just say they underestimated him big time, seeing as they may have been a bit more occupied with their show's ratings than actually taking down the bad guy, which was a major mistake. Nitro set off this insane explosion in Stamford that wiped out the entire city and everybody on the scene except for Speedball. Can you imagine? 600 people gone in a blink of an eye, including all of Speedball's superpowered pals. But this guy, his powers that involve bouncing around and soaking up energy, somehow managed to survive. At number six, Vixen's one cool hero you might not have heard much about. She's in the Justice League, but hasn't got much attention as some other big names. What makes her special is how she taps into the powers of animals, like she channels their abilities thanks to this totem passed down through generations. Any animal she could think of, bam, she can manifest the strength of a lion or the speed of a cheetah, by, and so on and so forth. The latest Vixen, Marie McCabe, has done some seriously awesome stuff. Like she became the boss of the Justice League, leading the top squad of superheroes is kind of a big deal. Only a handful of heroes have ever done that, and like their names are Batman and Batman. And to get the thumbs up from Batman himself to take charge is pretty massive. It shows that she's not just tough, but smart and reliable too. It's like being the team captain of an all-star team. A ton of pressure, but also a big honor. And number five is Ragman. Ragman is seriously underrated in the DC universe. He's not in the spotlight much, but he is seriously powerful. Roy Rory Reagan, the guy inside the Ragman suit, can control it like it's an extension of himself. This suit's not just a fashion statement, it's also a serious weapon. It protects Reagan and also kicks some serious bad guy butt. His suit's got this cool power that can absorb the souls of evil people. Pretty heavy stuff. Ragman isn't afraid to take on big bad demons. He once faced a whole fleet of demons and saved the earth, which is definitely no small feat. Even though he did take a beating, he came out on top and really showed how brave and heroic he is. DC should totally give this guy more screen time as he deserves to be up there with the big leagues like Superman and Wonder Woman. At number four is Spoiler. There's no spoilers, don't worry guys. The hero's name is Spoiler. Also known as Stephanie Brown, she might not ring a bell as loud as other big names in the Bat family, but she is a superhero worth knowing about. She didn't just follow in somebody else's footsteps as she carved her own path. As Spoiler, she stepped up big time, especially when facing off against a colossal baddie named Brother Eye. Now this villain here is no joke. Like, big league justice level big. But Stephanie wasn't afraid to take him head on. When Brother I tried to mess things up using a different timeline, Stephanie didn't just freak out. Instead, she used that timeline to her advantage. Brought heroes from that time to help her out. And if it weren't for her guts and quick thinking, things in the DC world might have turned out totally different. The next time you hear about Bat Family superheroes, don't forget to give some props to Stephanie Brown, aka Spoiler, because she's a real unsung hero in the DC universe. At number three is Killer Frost. Still in snow, known as Killer Frost, doesn't totally get the spotlight she deserves, although she is kind of 
heavily featured on this channel. Initially seen as a bad guy, she's been trying hard to change that image. Imagine from going from total baddie to trying to do the good stuff, it's, it's a massive leap. Killer Frost wasn't just chilling out, pun intended, as a villain, she had to battle her own past and nature to become a hero. Now what's cool about her is the determination she showed. It's like fighting against the odds, clawing her way out of the dark side. The transformation from an icy antagonist to a legit Justice League member is pretty huge, and not everybody gets that chance. So yeah, Killer Frost might not be as famous, but she's definitely earned her stripes. She's proof that even the chilliest hearts can thaw out for the better. At number two is the Human Target. Christopher Chance, better known as Human Target, is a hero in the shadows of DC Comics. His superpower? transforming into anybody to safeguard important folks. He also has awesome detective skills which make him a top-notch problem solver. But what makes him truly stand out is his selflessness. He once shielded Bruce Wayne from Deadshot's deadly aim. But he didn't just save the day, he shielded Batman's secret identity too using his face-swapping talents. Human Target's heroics go unnoticed. He's like this secret guardian angel for all the big shots and yet few ever give him the applause he deserves. Imagine having the guts to confront a villain like Deadshot, risking your own life just to keep others safe. It's these unsung heroes like Human Target who deserve a spot in the limelight. And coming in at number one is Batwing. Luke Fox, as Batwing in DC Comics, is seriously underrated. Now he's one of those heroes who doesn't get enough credit because, well, I mean, Batman's got this big shadow covering everybody else in Gotham. But Luke, he's no sidekick, you guys. He's a force to be reckoned with. There was one time in the comics when Gotham was about to get nuked by the League of Assassins. Now Luke didn't just sit around twiddling his thumbs. No, no, he got right in the thick of it. I mean, sure, he got nabbed alongside Asriel, but that didn't stop him. After busting out, he used his smarts to defuse the bomb that would have wiped out all of Gotham. It's definitely top tier hero stuff. It's a shame, really, that more folks don't really give Batwing the credit he deserves, given that, you know, he's hardly the most unique Bat character in all of DC. Yet, he's super awesome. He's not just another guy in a cool bat suit. He's got the brains, the guts, and the will to save the day when it counts the most. At number 10, it's kind of obvious, Aquaman. One might overlook the depths of appreciation for Aquaman within the Justice League. Sure, his capability to communicate with marine life might seem pretty niche, but let's reel in the bigger picture. The oceans cover about 70% of our planet, harboring uncharted territories and mysteries. Aquaman isn't just some guy who talks to fish. He's the bridge between those two worlds, a literal middle ground between humanity and the mysterious deep. His trident isn't just a fancy fork, you guys. It controls tides, wields immense power, and symbolizes authority. I mean, just think about it. The Justice League isn't just about battling supervillains, it's also about safeguarding Earth's entire spectrum, both above and below the waves. So perhaps it's finally time we give Aquaman the recognition he deserves for his role as an unsung guardian of not just our cities, but also our oceans. If you're enjoying the video so far, you can support the channel by pressing like, subscribing to Top 10 Nerd, and ringing that notification bell. I really appreciate it. At number nine, Dr. Light. Dr. Light, N no, not the villainous one. We're shining a light on Kimiyo Hoshi, the heroic version. During Crisis on Infinite Earths, Hoshi got a cosmic power-up courtesy of the Monitor. But she didn't just twiddle her thumbs after that. Oh no, she actually joined forces with John Kent's League. Fast forward to a mission with Damian Wayne where her true potential ignited. She latched onto her powers like a life buoy in the Sea of Trouble, seizing the Great Darkness's link to the Dark Army. And using her cosmic juju, she was able to keep the wonky multiverse in check. Like, imagine the multiverse like a Jenga tower on a shaky table. That's Dark Crisis for you. But thanks to Dr. Light's intervention, that tower stood up tall. So that tower stood up tall. At number eight is Martian Manhunter. When it comes to the Justice League, we often find ourselves focusing on the big names like the iconic Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. But let's not forget about the underrated gem in the lineup, Mr. Martian Manhunter. John Johns, as he's known on his Mars block, boasts an impressive record. He's been a steadfast member since the league's inception, a fact that might even surprise the most dedicated fans of the superhero world. Well, he took a brief hiatus to deal with his own rogues gallery in Metropolis, Martian Manhunter proved his mettle when the chips were down. The Dark Army threat called him back into action alongside his super buddies, and there he stood resolute and ready. In an ultimate showdown, he, like other heroes, met his quote unquote demise, only to triumph through the chaos, showing us that his place was never in question. John Johns, the shape-shifting, telepathic powerhouse, 
truly deserves a spotlight among Earth's mightiest heroes. At number 7 is John Constantine. Enter John Constantine, the unassuming yet pivotal member of the Justice League. Nestled within the DC Universe, his mastery over the arcane and his sharp wit are his greatest assets. Constantine's recent exploits with the Justice League Dark demonstrates his prowess in thwarting even the most menacing of adversaries. His instrumental role in quelling Merlin's earth-threatening havoc showcased his resourcefulness. But it's not just about the supernatural. When the cataclysmic onslaught by Pyrrha on the multiverse unraveled, Constantine's significance truly shone. United with the league's unconventional champions, he orchestrated a daring expedition into the Starheart. This voyage unearthed the elusive ties between Pyrrha and the looming Great Darkness, unraveling a truth vital to preserving the cosmos. So without Constantine's calculated audacity, the unraveling of this intricate tapestry might have remained an unrealized endeavor. At number 6 is Hank Pym. Dr. Henry Jonathan Pym is one of those Marvel superheroes that doesn't always get the spotlight, but trust me, this story is pretty intense. Imagine being haunted by guilt and self out like all the time. That's pretty much Hank Pym for you. He's a complicated dude, dealing with things like bipolar disorder and depression, even coming close to giving up on life once. But you know what's impressive? Despite all this, he's still focused on helping humanity through science and heroism. Hank's journey wasn't all smooth sailing. There's the whole arc called the Trial of the Yellow Jacket where he hits absolute rock bottom. Imagine feeling like you messed up big time and letting your friends down, he faces consequences, seeks redemption, and finally, he owns up to his mistakes. That's character growth right there. But but then things got tough again. Ultron, Hank's creation, got him tons of guilt. It's heartbreaking to see him struggle even when he's trying to be an Avenger again. He battles inner demons, his fears, and a messed up relationship with Janet. It's a roller coaster of emotions. Later on, writers didn't do Hank Pym justice, painting him as a punching bag in the Bandis era. But Avengers Academy does him justice, showing his heroic side as a mentor to troubled kids. Hank, like all of us, struggles with mental health and trying to fit in, which hits close to home for many. He represents anyone seeking a second chance which is super heroic in its own way. At number 5 is Layla Miller. Forget what you saw in House of M, that wasn't the real Layla. The One Who Matters is an X Factor Volume 3 by Peter David. So there's this mutant detective agency and Layla just walks in and starts working there. She's not your typical superhero, she's a mastermind. She's like a problem solver who knows everything before it happens. See there's this bad guy Damien Terp who's a time traveling troublemaker. He tries to mess up X Factor's plans but Layla is steps ahead, freaking an assassin and taking him out without breaking a sweat. She's the reason Tripp's schemes fall apart, and she does all this while saying she just kinda knows stuff. I mean, seriously, Layla is so cool that even the top villains like Doctor Doom and the King of All Hells owe her favors. At number four is Songbird. Songbird, aka Melissa Gold, has a roller coaster of a storyline in the comics. Starting out as a baddie, but later finding her way to the good side, she's had quite the journey. Her backstory is no walk in the park either. Runaway life, family troubles, the whole shebang. Now, what makes Songbird stand out is her power. She can manipulate sound like nobody's business. She's got these implants and enhancements that let her do some seriously cool stuff like sonic blasts, force fields made out of sound. She can even craft solid objects like weapons or platforms using sound waves. And flying, she's got that down too. But hold your hats because there's more. Songbird can mess with people's heads using her voice. I'm talking mind control here, though it's easier with weaker minded folks. In a nutshell, Songbird's got this killer power set that Marvel could dive into way more. She's got the potential to shake things up big time, especially in the Thunderbolts crew. Is yet another street fighting powerhouse with powers akin to Luke Cage. This dude, a former UWC fighter, got juiced up with powers by Dr. Carl Malice, which sounds cool at first, but here's the twist. Along with those powers, he got hooked on a substance that was supposed to keep him going strong, but instead, it messed up his mind big time, amping up his aggression. Demolition Man rolled with Daredevil, Captain America, and even kicked it with the Avengers, but after all this, after all that superhero cred, he ended up forgotten, wandering the streets in his old getup homeless. It's a sad deal. He had a heart of gold, but somehow got lost in the shuffle of Marvel big names. At number two is Daredevil. Daredevil doesn't nearly get the credit he deserves. I mean, lots of folks who aren't into comics just see him as a blind dude in a red suit. They think that he's an easy win for anybody, but that's not true. Matt Murdock's powers are rad, not lame. It's probably because that old Ben Affleck movie totally messed things up for him. They completely got his powers wrong. Like, people think he only sees with sound like echolocation or something, but that's so off! He's way cooler than that. Murdoch was originally enhanced by radioactive isotope, which later blinded him, and as a result, he possesses superhuman senses, agility, reflexes, balance, and etc. Murdoch's nervous system has also increased some of his abilities at peak human level. See, Daredevil can sense everything around him perfectly. He doesn't need to tap stuff to see. He's not just about hearing, he's got a full-on 
one super sense thing going on. But it's frustrating that so many people don't get it. But you know what? Maybe it's better this way because being underrated might be why he gets the best stories. If he was big as Spider-Man or Batman, writers might mess up his character. So maybe it's cool that he flies under the radar. And coming in at number one is Iceman. All right, let's get something straight here. Bobby Drake is one of the most powerful superheroes Period. Because his superpower isn't ice or cold, it's based on molecular motion. He has the power to influence the speed of molecules, thus making things colder. Which is obscenely powerful! He's been shown to prevent nuclear explosions, he's created ice walls so thick and strong it contained the Hulk, with a single thought, he can freeze the molecules and dissipate an entire person's body. He has the ability to block other mutants from accessing their powers too. In organic ice form, you can destroy his body, and he's still able to reform it, essentially making him close to unkillable. He can use surrounding moisture to grow in size and gaining superhuman strength in the process. Even though he's done all these things, he still hasn't tapped into his full potential. Now, while most of us astute nerds know about hydrokinesis allowing control over water molecules, there's more beneath the surface. He's manipulated water to turn himself into it, journeying through its very molecules. Yet his lesser known ability involves cellular replacement. Bobby discovered that he could draw ambient moisture into himself, using it to replace his own cells one piece at a time. This adaption lets him sidestep fatal neurotoxins by dissipating poison molecules into vapor and substituting untainted ones from his surroundings. Thus, he effectively heals and renews his body pretty much on command, demonstrating that as long as moisture exists, Iceman stands invincible, a testament to the hidden layers of the mightiest superhuman narrative. At number 10 is Steel Spider. Oliver Osnick was a bit of a fanboy for Dr. Octopus. I mean, I don't really see why you would see this super villain as a role model, but I digress. Anyway, Ollie wanted to be Doc Ock's sidekick, so he made these metal tentacles to impress him. But surprise, surprise, he eventually found out that Doc Ock wasn't exactly a role model worth following. That's where Spidey swooped in to save the day. Spider-Man showed him the ropes, and Ollie had a change of Heart. He redesigned those tentacles into legs, and bam, the steel spider was born. He tried the hero gig for a bit, but life eventually got a bit too complicated. He hung up his super cape, should I say his metallic legs for a while, hit the books at college, but then he came back during the whole Civil War debacle. Now, here's the kicker. Venom eventually would go on to bite his arm off, which was pretty rough. After that, things got hazy. Last we knew, he got caught up in the Superhuman Registration Act mess and ended up in medical prison. Poor guy just trying to do good, but got tangled up in a whole web of complications. At number 9 is Yuri Watanabe's Wraith. Yuri Watanabe used to work for the NYPD and was literally the only cop who had Spidey's back, while the rest of the entire task force weren't too keen on the web slinger. She and Spidey were doing alright as a duo until the supervillain named Massacre showed up. Tried as they might, they couldn't stop his rampage in time, and this failure led to Yuri getting the boot from the case, and she wasn't too happy about it to say the least. So what does she do? She reinvents herself as Wraith. No cape, no superpowers, just her brains, her detective skills, and some nifty little gadgets to help her take down the bad guys on her own terms. Now, Spider-Man wasn't completely on board with her solo gig, given her total lack of powers and whatnot. But when push came to shove, they did team up to tackle Mr. Negative. Now, even though Yuri was included in Insomniac's Spider-Man game, many fans still don't think that that minor appearance did the character true justice, so we're hoping that changes in the future. If you're enjoying the the video so far, please take a second to support the channel by pressing like, subscribing to Top 10 Nerd, and ringing that notification bell. At number 8 are the Brooklyn Avengers. These guys got their powers in the most bizarre way possible, thanks to their landlord and some radioactive bed bug spray. Yeah, imagine that. They're like the accidental superheroes of Brooklyn. So back in the day when Peter Parker was still a budding superhero, he teamed up with this crew, which included Psy and Phi, two telekinetic brothers, the hipster, that's hipst with an apostrophe R, are, pretty cool, who's an old dude who could hypnotize people, Paintball, who could generate paint bursts, kind of like a weaker version of Squid Kid from Splatoon. You also got Boilmaker, who's an intuitive machinist, Mints, who could charge candies into weapons, and Rotary, who could spin any object around. Yeah, seems like some of these guys hold the short end of the stick when it comes to their powers. Now, even despite some of these powers being just a little lame, Spidey still managed to learn some cool moves from them, skills that would actually come in handy later on in his crime fighting escapades. Now fast forward a bit and things took a turn for the worst for the
this superhero team. Someone starts knocking off these Brooklyn Avengers one by one. Spider-Man, being the good guy he is, jumps back in to help out his pals. You know how these superhero stories go, there's all kinds of chaos. Their whole apartment building eventually got wrecked in the process. Despite the setback, these Brooklyn Avengers are resilient. They decide to stick around and help keep their neighborhood safe even though they haven't made a comeback in Marvel Comics ever since. Who knows, maybe someday they'll swing back into action. At number seven are the Slingers. So the origins for this one is a bit crazy as Spider-Man got into some trouble he didn't ask for when he was framed for a crime he didn't commit. Thanks a lot, Norman Osborn. To clear his name, Spidey came up with four new superhero identities and rocked these four unique cool costumes. But once the mess was sorted out, he ditched those personas and went back to being your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Now here's where the plot thickens. You see, Black Marvel, an old retired hero, got his hands on those snazzy outfits and decided to hand them to four college kids. These young guns put on those suits and boom! One day you're a regular student and the next you're rocking a superhero suit fighting crime. These teens became the group known as the Slingers. Led by Prodigy, an expert freestyle wrestler with boosted strength thanks to his super suit, his team of Slingers also includes Dusk, who rocks a suit made from antimatter in the negative zone, which allows her to teleport, manipulate dark force energy, and she's also clairvoyant. Then there's the Hornet, a genius inventor slash expert in all things hard and software slash Olympic level athlete who actually had made his own Prowler suit first before being given the Hornet wings. And lastly, there's Ricochet. And lastly, there's Ricochet who has superhuman agility and who can chuck discs that deliver incredible force that also may explode on impact. The former monikers of Peter Parker may not be as famous as Spider-Man, but they're out there making a difference one sling at a time. At number six is Mimic. This guy's got the wild mutant ability called Power Mimicry which means he can copy the abilities of not one, not two, but up to five different superhumans all at once. It's like having a superpower sampler platter. And it gets even crazier. Mimic isn't limited to just mutant abilities because he can also mimic non-mutant powers like those of the Fantastic Four. Plus, after hanging out with these superpowered folks for a while, he can consciously switch up and choose which abilities to use on command. In Exiles number 14, Namor the Submariner is on a conquest to claim Latveria. And who steps up? None other than Mimic himself, and these two heavyweights go at it for nearly an hour, and ultimately, Mimic wins. Not only taking down Namor, but a whole army of Doombots all by himself some serious superhero muscle right there. As a member of an alternate universe exiles team from Earth-12, he doesn't nearly get the same recognition as Earth-616 heroes, but it doesn't make him any less powerful. At number five is Nova. Sam Alexander is the second incarnation of Nova, taking up after his father after discovering the Nova helmet and using its powers to protect the galaxy. At face value, he sounds kind of generic, especially with his supernova strength and speed, especially since he's overshadowed by his dad so often, but Nova is arguably much more powerful because the kid just can't seem to catch a break. In the final issues of Avengers vs. X-Men, he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Cyclops. And if you think that's impressive, wait till I tell you that Cyclops was imbued with the Phoenix Force. And believe it or not, this kid freaking won. That's like a David and Goliath moment right there. At number four is Aurora. Ever heard of Aurora? She's this awesome, super fast hero with some seriously underrated powers. Sure, her twin brother Northstar gets a lot of attention, but Aurora's abilities are top notch too. In a scene from X Men number 191, Aurora and Northstar casually destroy X Mansion, showing off their immense powers. But when Northstar's gotta take a moment to catch his breath, Aurora just doesn't hold back and goes on the brink of wiping out the whole mutant crew single handedly. She was a hair away from total domination. Now the thing is, she's got it all, speed, flight, and control over light, yet she's often sidelined compared to her brother. It's like everybody's sleeping on her massive potential. At number three is Speed. Speed, also known as Tommy Shepard, might not be on the A-list like Iron Man or Spidey, but he's seriously impressive. You see, Speed isn't just any speedster. He inherited his uncle Quicksilver's velocity, which automatically makes him one of the fastest folks in the Marvel Universe. As one of Scarlet Witch's two sons, he often gets overshadowed by his brother Wiccan. Now, obviously, Wiccan's powers are a lot more more versatile given that he does all things magic and speed just kind of runs fast. But don't get it twisted, Wiccan's magic ain't got nothing on speed's, well, speed. Why you ask? Well, you see, Wiccan can teleport. Now, one would think that means he could outpace his brother. And that was put to the test in Young Avengers Presents number three, where the two brothers raced against each other. Speed did the unbelievable, outpacing his teleporting brother in a race. Imagine that, outrunning somebody who can spontaneously manifest from one spot to another in an instant. That kind of speed is insane. 
It's moments like these where you wonder why Speed doesn't get more recognition. He's got the speed, the skills, and definitely the power to shake things up in the Marvel world. At number two is Tempo. You know, Tempo might not be the first superhero that pops in your mind when you think of Marvel, but trust me, she's one of the most badass time manipulators in the game. She used to hang out with the Mutant Liberation Front, rocking that iconic bullet-headed suit, but things got real interesting when she joined Krakoa. Suddenly, she had a shot at being a part of the X-Men crew, and that's when folks started noticing her. But the moment when Tempo truly proved herself came in the Marauder series. Until this point, Tempo was only known for slowing or stopping time, but here, she doesn't just stop time, she flips it like a pancake, sending time backwards by billions of years. Yeah, that's right, billions with a B. It's telling me that her first time time traveling, she accomplished a feat of such magnitude that most of the time travelers couldn't even dream of. This isn't your average hero. She's like the time traveling wizard of the Marvel Universe. I mean, sure, she might not have the same spotlight as other time travelers like Kang, but Tempo is proving herself to be a powerhouse you definitely don't want to underestimate. At number one is Hellion. Imagine facing off against one of the toughest superheroes out there, the Hulk. Yeah, Sunspot isn't the only one who stood up against the giant. Enter this dude. Despite being a young hero, he pulled off something insanely epic. In a comic called World War Hulk X-Men number one, he did the unthinkable. Using his telekinetic powers, he locked the Hulk's fist, giving his team a chance to regroup for battle. Yeah, you heard me right, y'all. A teenager managed to hold back the mighty Hulk's fists with his mind. Now, obviously that didn't last forever, but just managing to hold back the strongest force in the multiverse? Come on now, this guy should be a superstar. Now, he might not be as famous as some other Marvel heroes, but he's proven he's got some serious skills. Surviving tough situations and facing off against baddies like the Hulk shows he's definitely one to watch in the underrated superhero league. Number 10, Mantis. Mantis actually got her start in comics when she used her abilities to reform Swordsman or Jacques Duquesne, which actually got her into the Avengers. Mantis's powers and abilities are more than what you may have gathered from her film counterpart. Mantis has completely complete control over her entire body, which in turn gives her peak human agility, the ability to accelerate healing through force of will, and an empathic nature enabling her to communicate telepathically with and sense the emotions of others as psychic vibrations. She can also control her heart and respiratory rate and blood flow as well. Her mastery of the Kotati Priest's martial arts, which focuses on the manipulation of nerve endings and pressure points, has enabled her to knock out beings as powerful as Thor, and her telepathic and empathic abilities are improved upon thanks to the two little antenna that she has coming out of her head. But it doesn't stop there though. Mantis also gained abilities when she merged with the Kotati, such as being able to communicate with both plants and animals, and survive in space in a physically solid energy form. She can transfer herself from plant life to plant life across interstellar distances or even dimensions, creating a new body from the plant life wherever she ends up. She can transmit and receive telepathic impressions, she has precognitive powers, and more recently, she can fire power pyrokinetic energy blasts from energy fields, communicate directly with cosmic beings such as eternity and death, and completely control her personal energies as well as her physical form. I don't want to keep talking about it anymore. Number 9, Hawkeye. Clint Barton is essentially just a regular human man, but despite that, and likely because of his abilities and talents, he is considered a power level 4 according to Nick Fury's intel. Whatever that means. Those aforementioned abilities include being a master of archery in the use of regular bows, longbows, compound bows, and crossbows, with basically perfect accuracy, able to fire multiple arrows at a single target in just a few seconds, hitting multiple targets in a few quick strokes, and directly hitting small targets at the greatest of distances. But he now also has near perfect precision with any aimed or thrown weapon. He is at the peak level of human eyesight possible, is in peak athletic human condition with peak strength, endurance, and reflexes. He's an expert acrobat, tactician, and master martial artist. But just listing off his abilities isn't going to give you a proper understanding of how cool Hawkeye is. So what has he done? In Avengers Volume 3, number 14, Hawkeye was cornered by 17 marksmen and took them all down without taking a single life. And in Hawkeye Volume 4, number 1, Clint ran into a wanted criminal in a bar and took him down silently, somehow fracturing his neck with a deck of cards. I don't know. Number 8, Tigra. When Greer Nelson first came on the scene, she was just known as the Cat, and was given powers tied to her costume. But that all changed when she became Tigra, or Tigra, however you want to pronounce it. Mutating into a human-tiger hybrid in a ritual that bound her to the quote, Cat People, which while it may be a silly name, was a race of humanoid cats who were created in the Middle Ages. So. 
cat people. Now before you laugh at her for looking silly, just know that in her tiger form, Tigra is granted some useful abilities. Her superhuman strength allows her to lift over 10 tons with her leg muscles, allowing her to perform a standing jump of 12 feet. She can run at speeds of around 70 miles per hour, has superhuman durability, agility, reflexes, and stamina, and as we all know, cats have heightened senses and like to knock things off of wherever you carefully place them. And as far as I know, the former is still the same with Tigra, whose senses are about 10 times that of a human's. Tigra's eyesight can sense the infrared portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, allowing her for night vision. She can more easily detect the movements of an opponent. Her hearing is so strong that she can detect a ball of tissue paper being dropped at a distance of 40 feet, just like every other cat. And her sense of smell is so developed she can selectively sort through odors just to track someone. Number 7. Shang-Chi Shang-Chi is one of, if not the greatest martial artist on earth. He was trained from birth to become the ultimate warrior. He can take on multiple opponents at once and can even defeat people much more superhumanly powerful than he is. In fact, in the white hot room, when the Phoenix organized a tournament to pick who would be the new host, the only reason that Shang-Chi lost was because he refused to take someone's life, having him expelled from that tournament. He is particularly skilled in Chinese martial arts arts, but his skill branches out to many other forms of martial arts as well. In one case, he even worked with Spider-Man to create a new martial art based on Peter's powers. Shang Chi also is able to manipulate Chi energy, which he can use to enhance his strength and durability, and can even detect others based on their energy, like he did when he detected a psionically masked Jean Grey. But Shang Chi gets a much more significant boost to power when he's using the Ten Rings. He can use those rings as projectiles, manipulate their size, and use them to levitate or even fly. The rings grant the martial master superhuman strength, durability, speed, and stamina, and he can even manipulate the energies from the rings to do many other things as well. And then, just to top it all off, thanks to the other side of his heritage, Shang-Chi inherited his mother's psionic abilities to communicate with his blood relatives, even the deceased ones. Freaky. At number 6 is Solo. Solo is a lesser known ally of Spider-Man in the Marvel comic universe, whose name is actually James Bourne, a military man betrayed by his own team, who transformed into Solo, a guy who's all about hunting down terrorists and bad guys. He's got this cool thing going on where he can also teleport, which definitely sets him apart from your average crime fighting crew. Now, Solo doesn't always see eye to eye with Spidey, especially since Solo doesn't mind ending people. Nevertheless, sometimes they've got to team up to tackle some big bads to Together, sort of like a good cop, bad cop duo, but with superpowers. They've faced off against some serious threats side by side, making for some pretty epic comic moments. Plus, Solo even had a stint with Deadpool's crew of not so heroic heroes, the Mercs for Money. But staying true to his calling, he went back to his solo gig, fighting crime his own way. At number five is Nightwatch. Nightwatch, who honestly looks like a knockoff spawn, albeit and dare I say slightly cooler looking, with his demonic skull shaped insignia on his face. Anywho, in the far future, he holds the moniker of Night Eater, who repents and attempts to undo his image as a villain, and so he results to altering the past. Now, taking on the heroic moniker of Night Watch, he, he actually would eventually try to reset everything and escape his now heroic responsibilities, but he was dragged back into heroism once more to stop a dude who had stolen parts of his costume. Eventually, he'd team up with Spidey against Carnage's chaos in New York City, leading to Night Watch getting offed by a pair of criminals during the Great Game comic art, but thanks to some comic book logic, he managed to survive. Now eventually She-Hulk would unravel the truth about his alternate future as a villain, and the reformed hero now faces the music behind bars. At number 4 is El Muerto. So picture a whole family of luchador wrestlers passing down a mystical mask called El Muerto that gives them extra powers, which is basically the setup for Juan Carlos Estrada's story. Now poor Juan gets handed this responsibility, but ends up flubbing it by losing in a fight against a villain named El Dorado. The consequence is that Juan's got to beat Spider-Man to get his groove back, but that plan flops too. But instead of being all, I'm the hero, you're the loser, Spidey's like, let's team up, cause got some, got some moves, bud. Together they take down El Dorado, and Spider-Man helps Juan find his path. After that, Juan kind of fades into the background, occasionally popping up in some storylines. Now, El Muerto might not be the headline act, but that team up with Spider-Man was a pretty neat moment for this underrated ally. Coming up third is Bluebird. Back when Peter Parker first got his powers, Sally was right there in his world. She was full of energy, always seeking thrills, which 
often landed her in trouble. One time she stumbled into a showdown between Spider-Man and Electro, but it was at this moment when Sally decided to become a DIY hero, suiting up as Bluebird. However, she was more of a bother than a help to Spider-Man, not really listening to warnings to stay out of it. Sadly, her heroic stint ended tragically as she perished in a car crash. Later on, a clone of Sally would show up, but it's unclear if this one survived for real or vanished like the rest of the clone. At number two is Shock. Shock might not be the most famous Spider-Man buddy, but this guy deserves a little bit of spotlight. Todd Fields, just a regular dude whose dad worked for the bad guys, but only because he had no choice. Todd's dad was trying to make a powerful suit that taps into some crazy dark force dimension. But tragedy struck when a villain named the Crown off Todd's dad and yoinked the suit. Todd, fueled by revenge and determination, rebuilt the suit, becoming the electrifying hero, Shock. He and Spidey teamed up, taking down the Crown by overloading his suit. Now, Shock would eventually get caught up in some bad stuff, get, get zombified by the hand, and taken down. Luckily, Wolverine and the and the team at S.H.I.E.L.D. helped him out, fixing his now zombified mind. Since then, nobody knows where Shock is, but man, he deserves more credit for his electrifying heroics. And at number one is Cardiac. Cardiac is a superhero who's kind of like the Punisher, but instead of taking down the Mafia, he's tackling the messed up healthcare system. So he's got a sick costume, cool gadgets, and a heart replaced by a fancy device called a Beta Particle Reactor, which gives him powers that no regular human could have. Now his origin story hits pretty hard. Elias Wortham, Cardiac's alter ego, lost his brother to an incurable disease. Motivated by tragedy, he studied medicine and ended up in a pharmaceutical company's board. Here, but here's the kicker. This is where he discovered that the pharmaceutical company had actually hid a cure that could have saved his brother's life. Why? Because it wouldn't have made them as much money, obviously. That's the harsh reality Cardiac reflects. A system valuing profit over people's well-being. It's not just a regular hero. He fights with a sense of justice and moral obligation, making him a standout character deserving more recognition. He's not just muscles and gadgets, though. He's super smart, a genius, in fact, and a skilled surgeon. But his beta reactor of a heart always needs recharging, and if it fails, he's in for some trouble. Now, his gear is super awesome, too. He has a staff that shoots energy blasts and, high and a high-tech glider for quick flights. All in all, Cardiac is a hero taking on big problems with a big heart. Or, well, a big beta particle reactor. Coming in at number 10 is Ace the Bat Ham. Of all the Bat Family pets, Alfred the Cat, Bat Cow, Titus, Ace, came first, and he wasn't just another pet of Damian Wayne. Not that there's anything wrong with that, I'm just saying. Now, Ace seems to be a name shared by many dogs who have worked with Bruce Wayne and his companions. When he first appeared in Batman number 462 in May of 1991, Ace was a shepherd-type doggo, and that's been the most popular breed for Ace the Bat Hound, usually a German shepherd. But he was also a Mastiff for a long while as well, with no real explanation. The most recent and popular German shepherd, Ace the Bat Hound, was an attack dog for the Joker and was not treated very well. Luckily, this very good boy was taken in by Alfred and the Bat family and he became the bestest Bat boy ever. Yes, he did. Number nine, Batwoman. There have been a few different Batwomen over the years, but the one who will always stick in most fans' minds would have to be Kate Kane. Now, just to be clear, this is Batwoman we are talking about and not Batgirl. As a child of military parents, Kate has a soldier's mentality which just adds to her amazing fighting skills. She has cultivated over the years, not to mention a deep, intense desire to be the best she can be always. She received training from the Green Berets, Navy SEALs, and Special Air Service, and the villain Shadow also helped to train her to become a better hero. Following Batman's disappearance after the Infinite Crisis, Kate Kane assumed the Batwoman mantle and stepped in to become Gotham's protector. Kate has even displayed some superpowers. At one point, an injury left her able to detect electromagnetic fields, and in the future and perfect storyline, she even became a vampire. Number eight, Bluebird. I think Bluebird, or Harper Rowe, is looked over quite a bit when we talk about the Bat family, and honestly, it's kind of understandable. She did actually step down from her hero mantle in order to get her electrical engineering skills accredited, which honestly, that's the most real world reason for someone to stop being a hero, but it was probably the smart thing to do because Harper Rowe here is a whiz with electronics and electrical engineering. She's used her natural aptitude to help both her and her brother survive, as well as assisting Batman multiple times without him asking, approving upon some of his tech and helping out Red Robin on a few occasions using her homemade advanced tools. She's actually very cool, in my humble opinion, in her brief time being around. Number seven, Duke Thomas. Now I feel like this might bother a few people, but 
honestly, this young blood still has to prove himself in my eyes. There is absolutely no doubt he is powerful as one of the only metahumans on the Bat family roster. He's already naturally a cut above many others, but there are so many more that could bring him down without even needing superpowers. Powers don't always equal superiority on this family. Speaking of his powers though, Duke wields ghost vision, which he uses to perceive people and moments in the past and in the future. He also wields a cosmic awareness that extends into other realities and has even used the ability to travel across dimensions by light and shadow. Now he originally started as part of the We Are Robin movement, but left and ended up making it on his own. Batman then took him in, helped train him, and then sent him out to be a part of the new Outsiders team alongside Black Lightning. Number six, Jack of Hearts. Jonathan Hart is a hero you may not have heard of, or maybe you have, I don't know. What I do know is that Jack Hart was the son of a brilliant scientist, a scientist that created the ridiculously efficient liquid sci-fi fuel called Zero Fluid. In a tragic comic book backstory, that fluid was exposed to Jack and it gave him his awesome but difficult to control abilities. Importantly, he was also part alien with his mother hailing from the Contraxian race. Now, Due to his cellular mutation that took place after his Zero Fluid exposure, Jonathan Hart is now able to produce pink concussive energy beams and blasts from his hands and body, taking up the incredibly clever name of Jack of Hearts. Jack of Hearts can use his zero energy blast to fly at speeds currently not specifically known, but he has flown halfway across the United States in three minutes flat, which is pretty fast. His biological structure was reformed to basically give him the superhuman starter pack abilities, but his strength has been able to lift 25 tons. He has enhanced speed, stamina, healing factor, and durability, able to withstand some pretty heavy hits and survive in the vacuum of space. He also went through another mutation which gave him the ability to think as fast as a computer can, which is really cool, and he can retain and retrieve stored information from deep recesses of his brain, which is also really cool. Number 5. Blue Marvel Adam Brashear, a former marine and scientist turned superhero, stands as one of Marvel Comics' most formidable heavyweights. Not only does he have immense physical strength, but he also ranks among the most brilliant minds in the Marvel Universe. He's an underutilized character who happens to be one of my personal favorites. His origin story unfolds in the tumultuous 1960s amid a groundbreaking project centered on utilizing antimatter as an energy source. However, an unforeseen explosion during the experiment forever changed Adam and his close friend, Connor. The cataclysmic event transformed Adam into a living, stable antimatter reactor, giving him extraordinary superhuman abilities. Embracing his powers, he assumed the mantle of the Blue Marvel, a mass hero dedicated to safeguarding the world. But tragically, Connor's fate took a darker turn as he became Anti Man, a villain. Their epic clashes reached a climax during one unforgettable battle when the Blue Marvel's mask was torn away, revealing his identity as an African American hero. In the racially charged climate of the 19th 1960s America, President John F. Kennedy urged him to retire prematurely to alleviate tensions. It wasn't until decades later that he came back as a full on superhero and kicked some serious butt in the Avengers. Number four, Cersei. Cersei is a member of the Eternals, an evolutionary offshoot of humanity gifted with amazing powers and abilities to look after the human race through the ages. Which is similar but also just a smidgen bit different from the Eternals movie counterparts. As an Eternal, Cersei's body is augmented by cosmic energy and she has total mental control over her entire molecular structure, which allows her and other Eternals to be immortal, indestructible, and invulnerable to pretty much anything. Cersei has enough strength to bench 20 tons, but thanks to her telekinesis, she can augment that to lift about 25 tons. She can also fly at around 760 miles per hour, which is, I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty dang fast. She can project cosmic energy, has telepathy that allows her to hypnotize weak minded fools, but she can also teleport, but she hates it. And she is even able to project images from her mind, which is such a cool idea for an ability. Those are all the powers that we don't see in the Eternals movie, because arguably the ability she has the most talent in is her matter transmutation ability, which allows Cersei to transmute mute nearly any item or being into almost whatever she wants them to be. Among the Eternals, she has the highest ranking of power with this ability, and it allows her to self-heal any injury she does actually sustain, which aren't many because she's awesome. Number 3, Luke Cage. Criminal turned unstoppable superhero is quite the feat, but Luke Cage handles that with grace, becoming a pillar of his community and even eventually becoming mayor of New York itself. Whenever I think of Luke Cage, the word unstoppable is what actually 
actually comes to mind. I just think of him as this big brick wall just standing in the way of anyone who would try to harm anyone else. Luke went through a super soldier experiment known as the Burstein process, which increased his cellular regeneration rate. This means that Luke was given a level of super strength that, with training and experience, has made him strong enough to lift 50 tons. But there have been times where he's exceeded that, and this strength lets him perform thunderclaps, leap incredible distances, and he's been able to grab onto the back of an aeroplane and force it to come to a complete stop. That is nuts. Alongside his strength, he was obviously given superhuman stamina to match with that, but most know him for his nigh invulnerability. Luke's skin, muscles, and bone tissue are about as hard as titanium steel, making him basically immune to bullets and blades. He can withstand hits of around 1 ton and blasts of 150 pounds of TNT. But those numbers wax and wane depending on the story. He has taken hits from people far stronger than himself and survived falls from 90 stories up. If Peter Parker is the heart of New York, Luke Cage is basically like the wall. Number 2. Wasp Traditionally, the Wasp has been considered one of the less powerful members of the Avengers. Her unique abilities, which include shrinking, flight, and emitting energy blasts through her wasp sting, are undeniably formidable, yet individually they might be classified as street level powers. In the presence of iconic figures like Captain America, Thor, and Iron Man, Few anticipated that the Wasp would rise to prominence within the team's ranks, however, the Wasp defied those expectations in remarkable fashion. She achieved the distinction of becoming the first woman to lead the Avengers ever, a feat that astonished her teammates and fans alike. Her years of experience endowed her with wisdom and capabilities that far exceed the sum of her individual powers. The Wasp's mastery of her abilities, coupled with her intelligence and resourcefulness, transformed her into a formidable hero who surpassed the expectations of everyone who had ever underestimated her. And finally, in at number one today is Protector. Novar, also known as the Protector, is an extraterrestrial figure who carries a bit of a renegade reputation. In a remarkable display of his power, he once took down both Thor and Captain Marvel simultaneously. An impressive feat by any measure. However, it's worth noting that many readers may not be familiar with the character of the Protector, as Novar has gained more substantial recognition among fans as Marvel Boy. Particularly particularly through his involvement with the Young Avengers. Hailing from Earth 200080 as a Kree super soldier, Novar has since laid claim to the vast universe of Earth 616 as his own. His unique set of powers include, and I'm not joking, explosive fingernails, psychedelic saliva, wall crawling abilities, heightened senses, and a remarkable conscious control over various bodily functions among other powers. Novar's prowess in combat is truly formidable, a trait that certainly captured the attention of his teammate turned lover, Hercules. In shunning his Avengers affiliation and the Protector moniker, Novar has found his true calling and thrived as a member of the Young Avengers, the West Coast Avengers, and has even transitioned into the role of an interstellar diplomat and a guardian of the galaxy. 